Your writing is rubbish. I don't know who advised you to be a writer. There is nothing worth salvaging in this mess. I was 26 when a literary agent said these words and told me that I would never be a writer and should just give up. Isn't this something that we've all heard and keep hearing from time to time? The world tells us one thing, but there's this little voice deep inside that says otherwise. Is it worth listening to this voice? What if it's wrong? But more importantly, what if it's right? If you've seen The Pursuit of Happiness, you'll know that there's a quote that goes something like this. The world is your oyster. It's up to you to find the pearls. That has exactly been my motto in life. Finding and listening to my inner voice. Living in Pakistan, I was always led to believe that there were only a few socially acceptable career paths for me. I could be a bureaucrat, a doctor, an engineer, or a businessman. There was no in-between. There still isn't for most people in Pakistan. Creativity is perceived as volatile, unreliable, something that ebbs and flows, which makes it threatening for a lot of people. They seek to thwart it. As Nietzsche noted, one must have chaos in oneself in order to give birth to a dancing star. John Cleese talks about it in his book Creativity. He says you need one hour and 15 minutes every day for creativity. It takes the mind 15 minutes to quieten down and then you have one hour to play around with whatever comes next. Creativity is ephemeral and volatile to a certain extent, and therein lies its beauty. Life can be so much more than a single choice, don't you think? But living in Pakistan, we're led to believe that we can be passionate about just one thing in life. That's not true. John Cleese talked about it in his famous talk, that there is a relationship between your IQ and creativity. You don't need to have a smart left hemisphere in order to be creative. Similarly, you don't need to work in a specific field in order to be creative. Human nature is weird. If you're told something enough times, you're liable to think that it's true, as was demonstrated by Dr. Lynn Hasher. She called it the illusory truth effect and said that it's used to a great extent by marketing professionals, leaders, and politicians. Some might even call it brainwashing. I'd say it's used to a great effect in Pakistan as well. Of course, I wouldn't say that I was any different. I never thought that I would ever make it. But I remember when I turned 25, I sat down and thought, you can either give your everything to this writing, or you can spend the rest of your life running around in circles, trying to avoid it. Do you know what I did? I decided to take the plunge. Yes, it was a big risk, but you know what? The day I decided that I will be a writer, that I will write the book I've always wanted to write, something in me changed. I felt this bubbling sense of purpose deep inside me. Plot twist, that feeling fades if you let it. So much so that you end up wondering whether you even had it in the first place. And that's when self-doubt creeps into your life. Coming back to my story, I was very excited when I started submitting to literary agents. I remember thinking, this is where my life changes. This is it. So when the rejection started coming in, it felt surreal. I thought, is this even happening to me? 
So what happens when your work is rejected? When it's criticized? When people don't seem to love it? Should you give up? The answer is no. Of course not. You haven't come this far just to give up. Criticism is natural. You should be worried if you're not getting any criticism because that would be very unrealistic. Having said that, not all forms of criticism can or should be accepted. If someone is giving you constructive criticism and showing you a way to improve your work, then that is something you should consider. But if someone is criticizing you for the sake of criticism, then I would steer clear of that. Creative work is a mixed bag in any case. What works for some may not work for others. But if you're just starting out, it's good to have a group of trusted fellow writers. I have my group and I can tell you that they've never disappointed me. It's a very snug feeling knowing that there are others like you out there that would help you when you need them. It's the best feeling in the world. Which brings me to my question. Do you believe in fate? I think I do. But I also believe in the importance of hard work. And that if you give something your everything, every single thing in your arsenal, then even if you fail, at least you'll know that you tried your best. As Steve Jobs said, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect the dots looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. Coming back to my story, the day I received that abusive rejection from the literary agent, I confess I felt depressed enough to give up. I let all that self-doubt come crashing back into my head and wreak havoc. I let myself believe that it had all been for nothing. Do you know what happened the next day? I heard from one of UK's top literary agents who wanted to read my full novel. The same agent, he'd read the same thing the other agent had, but had felt differently. In fact, he'd felt so strongly about it that he wanted to read the full manuscript. If that isn't a 180 degree to turn, I don't know what is. I literally went from questioning my talent one day to having my work read by the best in the business. The takeaway from this is that nobody knows you better than you. Nobody can. If your inner voice is telling you something, believe in it. If you see that light at the end of the tunnel, Go for it. Believe me, it's much better to be on the other side. That elusive success, it may take time to arrive, but it does arrive in the end. I find that the simple act of believing in something is incredibly powerful. Of course, there will be times when all you can do is write because the influx of ideas is just so huge. But normally, you can maintain a day job and still write. Some people write in the, during the days. Some people write at night. For many parents and carers, it may mean sacrificing that one hour of television to write. For me, nighttime works best as I feel that my mind is poised for creativity and very open. However, I don't agree with the notion of writing as many words as you can in a single day. Creativity doesn't work like that. It's not a numbers game. I find that the process of thinking is also work. Those thoughts, they may not help you today, but they could help you tomorrow, next week or next year. You can't put a timestamp on creativity. As Marie Kondo said, we must find joy in what we do. It must spark joy for us. Life is too short in any case. If what you're doing isn't making you happy, then what's the point of doing that? Write because you love writing. 
write for the thrill of seeing your words on the screen or page and knowing that you've written them. Write because it's your work and it deserves to be read. It's hard to put yourself out there. Believe me, I know. I used to be a huge introvert back in the day with crippling stage fright. My family was a kind of family that took security very seriously. As a child, I wasn't allowed to go out of the house without an adult, something quite at odd, odds with other children my age. I remember there was a time when I was asked to come up to the front of the class and I totally panicked. The name calling and jeering didn't help either. But I took something from that experience that day. I realized that I needed to be more comfortable in putting myself out there, but also that I needed to find the right balance between confidence and having unrealistic expectations of myself. That day in school, I was being unrealistic in thinking that I could brave a crowd of cruel students just like that. No, it takes time. It takes patience. It takes a great deal of strength to write or speak your truth. But the good news is that people will listen. Not everyone will. And that's okay. The ones who matter will. And this is how you deal with rejection. Because your work can't be everyone's cup of tea. Just like your truth can't be for everyone. Yes, you will have setbacks, but who doesn't? But the setbacks won't be able to hold you down forever. And now that bullying, gaslighting and shaming are all too common in society, it is more important than ever for us to look, listen to our inner voice. When there's nobody to listen to you, when there's nobody to hear you, turn to your inner voice. Hear it and you will find your validation. Steve Jobs is very popular for creating the reality distortion field. It was believed that in Jobs' presence, reality was malleable. He was such a force of nature that he could persuade anyone of anything. But what this truly shows us is that we have it in ourselves to do that. The magic is within us. Don't worry if your creativity doesn't conform to a 9 to 5 routine. You can't barricade creativity. Just write when the inspiration strikes. I always like to imagine where I would like to be in life, like my highest possible aspiration. I think about it and I imagine how it would feel if it were all to come true. That feeling, that high. Hold on to it. Believe in it. It will help you in every future course of action. The magic is all in our head, just like all the self-doubt. The trick is to tap into that magic. The day I decided to take the plunge was the day my life truly changed. I went from being an unpublished writer in Pakistan with no prospects to an author navigating the convoluted realm of UK publishing, finding an agent and getting published. The other day, I found out that my latest novel has been selected as one of the best books of 2021, destined to become a modern classic. Be authentically who you are. For me, it's a Pakistani author, proud of my country and heritage, but wanting to shed light on issues and customs that I find are outdated or inhuman. Look deeper within yourself. That magic is hiding in plain sight. Don't think of what others will say. People will always talk. Be yourself. I broke away from a lot of societal expectations to follow my dream. And I listened to my inner voice when it told me that this is what I wanted, needed to do. 
summoned up the resources to follow through. Despite crushing rejections and disapproval from society, I knew that I had a story to tell and a voice worth hearing. If you told me 10 years ago that one day I'd have not one but two novels published in the UK with rave reviews from authors and news publications that I've always looked up to, I'd have laughed. But here I am. That's the beauty of life. It always surprises you. As popular author George Eliot said, it is never too late to be who you might have been.